Hi, and welcome to our second set of AP Chemistry Reactions. This time we will be looking at single replacement. Now we did actually do single replacement in pre-AP, and Ms. Marusik would say something that this is uh, get a new girlfriend, kick the old to the curb type thing. The other was wife swap. So we need to get a new girlfriend and then the poor other gets kicked to the curb and is all by herself. Now there's one case where you could talk about get a new boyfriend. Uh, but that's kind of the analogy here, kick to the curb. All right, for these. And let's take a look at how we are going to recognize these first. I think that's a, an important aspect of these. So how do we recognize that it's a single replacement as opposed to a double replacement? Well, we would have a metal plus an ionic compound. Now, I think you're going to start seeing a pattern here. We're going to have an active metal. Let me address that in just a moment. And water, which is a compound. An active metal plus acid, which is a compound and a halogen plus an ionic halide. So if you look at each one of these, we have element, 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 element. So we have an element plus a compound leading to a new element plus a different compound. And these are a subset of our redox reactions. And so we're going to refresh our memory from way back in 10th grade, I know that feels like it was forever ago, but way back in 10th grade when we learned what redox reactions were. Now, let's come back to that word active here. How do you know if it's an active metal? Well, since all AP reactions go, in other words, they proceed to make product, we really don't have to worry about that word active. Now, there is something called an activity series, and we'll talk about that later on when we get in more into the redox reaction portion uh, or the redox chapter, but we don't have to worry about it in this context uh, because if, if it's, it's an active metal, be simply because it's going to react or we wouldn't be asked. Now, halogens. If you forget what the halogens are, I suggest that you go to YouTube and you find Miss Kulkarni's video on Hallow Hallow and maybe she can enlighten your mind and your memory on that. Now, first let's start with a couple of key reminders here. We want to make sure that you remember your diatomics. We haven't seen these for a while and so I can imagine that they might not be at the tip of your tongue anymore. Remember, the I from, is for iodine, the Br is bromine, and these are always found in pairs when they're pure. Now, once they're bonded to other substances, all bets are off. So I, we've already seen empirical formulas, and some of you wanted to use that diatomic because you did remember that they were diatomic. But since these were in the in com chemical compounds, we weren't dealing with diatomics. We're talking about their pure, natural states. And there's a number of other ways of remembering it, but this is the way I remembered it. If you look at a pattern on the periodic table, you'll see that it goes over from nitrogen to fluorine. We slide hydrogen over every once in a while. It seems to have like two spots on the periodic table and then on down to iodine. So it makes sort of like a mailbox post or something on the periodic table if your mind likes to wrap around patterns. Now, another thing we need to focus on is there are some elements that have two oxidation states. They have a lower oxidation state and a higher oxidation state. Those are the types of elements that we would be using Roman numerals for in their names, like copper one or copper two, etc. Now, in the olden days, they called, we ended the higher oxidation state with ick and the lower with us. And you may still run across those 
Uh, I try to avoid them, but you might see them. So don't worry about it on one of my tests, and I haven't seen them on an AP test in a long time. So how do we know then for such elements that have two oxidation states, whether I want them in the product at the higher or lower oxidation state, or we're just going to call that a charge for now. They're not quite interchangeable, but at this stage of the game, we can use them as somewhat as synonyms. Now, this is a nice phrase that gives us some guidance that is typically going to, I say typically, all right, this is not always going to happen because it really depends on, on what they're reacting with and what the, the energetics of that reaction is. But for this predicting purposes, this works really well and AP will accept this. So as, if we remember this phrase, as for arsenic, snoopy, that's tin, fell is iron, huge, that would be mercury, cups, is our good old copper, cracked would be chromium. We are going to assume that these all go to their higher states and that all the rest would oxidize to their lower state. Remember, we're predicting, we're predicting the most likely product. And again, we've already mentioned this, all reactions go. No worries about activity series. Now, we still want to remember your old biddy. You remember BD cubed or your old biddy? I'm your old biddy. There's me right there. Or what I hope to look like when I'm a little bit more of a little old lady, right? We still need to balance. We will still need to dissociate. We will still need to delete those spectator ions. It's pretty doubtful that you'll decompose, but I still want you to keep it on that checklist so that you don't forget about it. Later on, when you're really good at recognizing these when you've worked a lot and you have been noticing the beauty in those patterns and trends, which is why personally I like chemical reactions. I didn't at first when I first taught AP, but I've grown to really like them because once you see those patterns and trends, I felt like I had a much better grasp, a much better understanding of how elements behave chemically and then we can predict behavior in theory we can control behavior and so forth so it's really a valuable skill but it does take time to recognize these this is not likely going to be your most critical but we want to keep it in the back of our mind and uh, also that uh, we're not going to be dealing with this rule that was from the double replacement um, because aqueous ammonia would imply we have two compounds and we're not dealing with two compounds. So you're not gonna have to worry about that aspect yet. So now let's go on and see what we have to deal with. This is an example of a metal plus an ionic compound. So we have a piece of aluminum and we are going to add it to a solution of, that's a key word, lead to nitrate. So let's write our formula. We have aluminum, it's a solid, aluminum metal plus lead to nitrate. That means, remember, that the lead is two plus. You have to know your polyatomics, nitrates minus one. And remember, AP does not want to see charges on anything that's a neutral formula unit or compound. So, oops, I was thinking of the, uh, the aluminum there, sorry. So lead to nitrate, I'd need two nitrates there. And now, at this point, I want to remind us of how we can start to get into oxidation numbers. An element all by itself, not bonded to anything else, is zero. Now, I'm not going to look at the nitrogen exactly here. The nitrate's minus one. That leaves the lead as plus two. So now you have to ask yourself, does aluminum want to become positive or negative? Well, since aluminum is a metal, it wants to become positive. That means aluminum wants to steal nitrate. And so we would end up with aluminum. Now aluminum becomes plus three. Don't worry about that two there. That's when nitrate dances with lead. Aluminum and nitrate have their own little dance. That's a two-step. Theirs is a little bit more of a three-step. Now that leaves poor lead all by itself. So now let's look at those numbers again. Aluminum is plus three, minus one, and zero. And I'm telling you right now, 
do not show those charges over your final answer in the, the AP box. Now, we need to balance. Remember, you all biddy. The next one is balance. So I have two nitrates here and three here. So I need a two and a two, excuse me, a three. And put that in the wrong place, I apologize. Two there, and I'll need a three and a three. Now, the next step is to dissociate. Remember, it was balance, then dissociate. Aluminum solids just stay solid. Three PB2 pluses. And I want you to notice something. We need to find a way to start making shortcuts. This is aqueous. Since all nitrate salts are aqueous, this is aqueous. And I hope at this stage you can start to see that my nitrate is going to be my spectator ion. If you don't see that, then go ahead and do your complete ionic. I'm going to go ahead and say, wow, I see that that's just going to be a bunch of nitrates swimming around in that aqueous solution, so I'm not even going to bother writing them down. So I did two steps at once. I dissociated and I deleted spectator ions. Now you might want to ask yourself if anything decomposes, and no, it does not. We do not have any of those three, nor do I anticipate any. So now I do want to highlight a common mistake here, and the common mistake is to leave a charge on this lead. The oxidation number of the lead is zero. Don't have a charge on it. There should be nothing in this little upper right hand corner here. No zero or anything, nothing. That should be empty or blank right there. I see that commonly when students do this. We're going to do a quick evaluation of this. Let's look at aluminum. Aluminum became less negative, so it lost electrons, and we call that oxidation. So that's a term brought up from the basement of your memory. And I like to talk about more negative and less negative uh, because we are gaining and losing negative species. A student really helped me see that, that that was a clear way. Now lead went from plus two to zero. Lead became, the lead ion became more negative. It must have gained those negative electrons, and we call that reduction. That's why these are a subset of our redox. And the phrase we, re we did in sophomore year was oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. All right, I'm going to, when you come back, I'll work some of each of the other categories and we will see how well you're getting this when we are in class next time. Look forward to seeing you soon.